Perhaps I'll just uh, close and go to the next um, So that's what uh, we're here to discuss now. Um, upgrading your custom app app developments to S4 HANA. Um, if that's not what you came for, then <laughs> you could be in the wrong place. Um, so just some background on me. My name is Henry Curtis. I've been in SAP for the last 20 odd years. Uh, when Nelson Mandela came out of jail, that's when I started in SAP. Um, and it's pretty much what I've done in my working life. Um, I'm an ABAP programmer. Um, I've done a lot of MN, um, quite a bit of FI and project management and architecture along the way. Um, and I currently work for BEST, where I do a sort of assortment of those roles. Um, BEST is a um, SAP technology partner. Um, we build uh, SAP add on modules and some related non SAP stuff um, uh, to assist those modules, like web portals and OCR technology. Okay, so this S4 HANA, we're all very excited about it. Um, the web is, you know, in general, we all clap hands and say it's great. Um, I'm I for one and think it's great. It is the biggest uh, change that I've seen since I've been in SAP. Um, you know, we had the Java, I think we were all rushed off to become Java programmers. <laughs> and I, I never really used it. <laughs> um, and then we had ABAP objects, and that's, and that's still there, we use it quite a lot. But the S4 HANA is a, is a really massive change and, and quite exciting for us all, so that's great. Um, but how do you convert your, your custom Z developments? And every organization that's had SAP for a while, will have tons of these, okay? You've probably got thousands of programs. Um, and how do you know, are they gonna work? Um, how do you fix them? Um, how do you test them, etc.? So that's really what we had to talk about. And I'll tell you about my experience with, with our add-on software, um, what we had to do to make it work for S4HANA. Um, so quickly the agenda, I'll, I'll give you a brief intro about us and, and what the software does so you get a, a taste for um, the size of the job that we had to do. Um, then I'll talk about the steps that you go through. These are quite well documented and I'll tell you how we applied those. Um, and then Fiori, another exciting buzzword that's associated with this for Hannah, what we did there. Um, and then we'll have some time for questions. And you're all welcome to just shout in a little bit while I'm talking and ask me something if it occurs to you. Um, okay, so quickly about what the add-on does. Um, I've got a couple of slides. Um, that, that I'd like to show you. Um, actually, I'm joking. These are one, one of the, my colleagues um, developed a, a little two minute video um, on what the product does. And, and if I don't play it, I think she'll, she'll kill me after this speech. <laughs> I will. <laughs> so, there we just quickly play it. If you're an accounts payable manager using SAP financials, you already know how well SAP works. BEST offers functionality that SAP doesn't. BEST automates your supplier reconciliations and does away with spreadsheets and inefficient manual processes. Simply add our SAP certified module to your current SAP suite, then allocate additional transactions to your users for supplier recons. There's no interfaces to third-party systems when you're logging into anywhere else. Everything is still done in SAP. No longer done outside of SAP, your supplier reconciliation report is now available immediately after automated matching by BEST in SAP. The original supplier statement and report are both stored in SAP. Fast to retrieve, easy to access and approve. You save on paper, printing and storage. The reconciliation report can be emailed by the system to suppliers flagging missing documentation and other unreconciled items. Automatic reminders can be sent to suppliers to remind them to submit their statements if these are late. PDF statements, Excel statements, electronic statements, paper statements, no problem. These can all be read and loaded into Best SAP for reconciliation. How does our module work? Best reads and automatically matches statement line items to your existing SAP documents and invoices using smart matching algorithms. Supplier reconciliations in Best are more efficient, error-free, and faster to produce. Not only are invoices matched, but also parked documents. 
the GRIR and any invoices still in vendor invoice management tools. Special SAP processes such as down payments, retentions, linked customers and more are specifically catered for because BEST is seamlessly aligned with SAP. Your stakeholders are happy. Your IT department, as this is a SAP certified module. Your suppliers, who appreciate accurately reconciled accounts, as well as your auditors. BEST offers a broad range of management reports directly from SAP. Aging of outstanding invoices and other documents. Consolidated totals across vendors and companies. Matching rate analysis by vendor, clerk, company, and many more. You can also check the validity of your creditor balance sheet figure, and the system can calculate suggested accruals. Global multinationals using SAP also use BEST to automate accounts payable. Contact us for a demo. BEST, it's SAP reconciled. Okay, good. So that's what the software does. Um, technically, what's behind it? Um, it's in a SAP certified namespace. I think many people are used to SAP certified add-ons. So ours is BST1, um, so it's not a Z. Um, there's 122 transactions made up of end user transactions, master data, configuration data, um, 531 programs, 144 tables. So that was the size of the development that we had to convert to S4HANA. And we've got about 30 sites, 30 plus sites with thousands of end users. Um, so we have to do it right because uh, we're going to need to deploy it to them soon. Okay, so quickly, what's I have a development environment? Um, we develop in a development system, we save transports, um, we package those transports in another system um, uh, into packages, PAT files, um, and these PAT files can then be uh, applied to the rest of our environment where we test it in the lowest SAP version, the highest SAP version, and then we distribute it to our clients um, and they can apply those like applying any other SAP patches. The one nice thing about uh, the SAP certification is that you get a tool called um, the add-on assembly kit, and that comes with code checks. So every time we uh, develop something new, it's checking our code for good coding techniques. So uh, that's very handy when you upgrade because hopefully by the time you upgrade and you should already have applied good techniques. Okay, so now onto our migration to S4 Hanna. Um, the topics. Uh, first you've got to make the job smaller. Um, how do you do that? Um, the kind of changes that may affect you, how do you find out what they are? Um, are there WhatsApp tools that are available to check your code? and see what needs to be changed and our specific journey. <coughs> so the first thing is, um, over the years we've developed many thousands of other programs. Um, how do you know which ones you still use? Okay. Um, things like Solution Manager, do you have program usage reports? So you can track, ah, these ones haven't been used for years, they should go. Um, what, what we've done is that every, every time that program is called, we just log that it's been used. Um, and I think many people do something similar. Um, so that's one way, have a look and, and see what's used. Um, and really, the, the reason for reducing this um, is that if you've got thousands of programs and you could have hundreds, the job is much smaller. Um, so you want to try clear out all the old programs. <coughs> Um, all right, so we jumped ahead there a bit, but the program usage reports, that's one way to check what's being used. Um, another way is, you know, at, at your site, you've probably got people that have been there for a decade or two, and they know very well which programs are being used and which aren't. Um, you know, and that kind of a person could quickly just go down the list and say, all of these are being used and these aren't, okay? So there's that institutional knowledge. Um, <laughs> Documentation, very handy, if you don't know what they do. Um, and if you're not sure, you could always switch off that program, disable the transaction, and see if anyone squawks. Um, and if they do, then switch it back on. Um, 
but uh, in general they won't. <laughs> it's quite surprising. Um, and you know, just in case, uh, we always copy our, our programs just to somewhere else in case we ever need to code something similar or we find that we, we move to the area. Okay, so the, concept, the conference is all about reinventing. And we know uh, from you know, the speakers that there's been a lot of change in technology. Um, and this is really what brought about S4HANA. The hardware improved, um, the HANA database came along. And so therefore, the way that SAP designed their database structure in the 80s and 90s um, is no longer required. They can, they can do it better now with different database design uh, with HANA. <coughs> Okay, so if we take the finance module, the SAP FI module, um, before we had the main finance line item table, BSEG, and the header table, BKPF, and then we had a bunch of index tables, which are really just copies of the data in BSEG and BKPF, okay? Um, so on the creditor side, you would have BSEC and BSEC for the open and cleared items, and on the debtors, BSID and BSAD, and BSIS and SAS and GL, um, and then you also had lots of monthly summarization tables, so GL, TO, etc. Okay, now those are no longer required. Okay, SAP so can just keep them all in the one table. Um, so those tables are deleted, <coughs> right? Um, and what SAP has done is the tables aren't there, so actually the data is not there, but they've created views. So you can still select those tables, and you can do an SE16 right, on those table names, which are now views, and the data will come up. But behind that, there's no data. Okay, so now that's quite a big change. Um, and in due course, I expect BSEG and BKPF must go as well, because there's this, there can only be one, the single journal table, I think. Most people have heard of it. <coughs> Okay. Uh, and I suppose BSEG and BKPF must go too. Um, it might be a bit more complex for SAP to do, but in the future S4 HANA versions, they'll go too and also become views. Okay, so SAP, a lot of the SAP programs had to change because now they don't need to update BSEG, BSEG, GLTO anymore. All right, so where they've got programs that used to update these tables, they had to amend them or delete them. Okay, they only need to update BSEG and BKPF at the moment. So in a similar way, if you've got any Z programs that perhaps have append structures to these tables, they're going to go and you're not going to be able to update them. But you will be able to still select on those tables. So in general, most of your Z programs should work. Okay, because you're doing more selecting than updating append structures. Okay, so how do you find out for sure? Um, code inspectors. All right, so we've got the, in the add-on assembly kit, we've got some code inspectors. Um, a good one is the uh, SCI, SAP code inspector transaction. Um, if you haven't implemented an S4 HANA system and you want to check, um, so you know, maybe in two years you're going to implement it and you want to get a view now, what are the changes going to be? What are the changes going to be required on the Z programs? You can implement what SAP calls the evaluation system. Um, so you need at least NetWeaver 7.5.1 or higher. Okay? And you do need the HANA database behind that. Um, so you don't need S4 HANA, but the HANA database. And then you can go to the SAP website, you can download a variant and upload it into the SAP Code Inspector transaction, SCI and SAP, and run that and run it through all your Z programs and it'll give you a list of what is an acceptable phrase for HANA. Okay. Um, and then you can also go and read about the changes um, on the SAP website. Things called simplification lists. Um, they're much like short dumps in SAP. Uh, short dumps aren't so short, they're actually very long. And the simplification lists are, are very long as well. Um, but they are detailed and, 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 and quite valuable. 
Okay, so what we did first um, is we upgraded to using the HANA database, so not S4 HANA, S4 HANA is the, uh, the finance module, and the new finance module with the new data structure, and HANA is the database. So we first updated our product to HANA and got it certified for that, uh, principally because some of our clients started using the actual HANA database uh, a couple of years back. Um, so that was quite good for us. Um, it was fairly easy. Um, we only had to make one small syntax change, um, and the product worked. In case all those programs worked just just on its own um, with the HANA database. Um, and I was always worried about having to drastically change the way that we program. Okay, with because now with HANA every single field is indexed, etc., etc. But in general, the coding rules for performance remain the same. Uh, don't go and select the whole database and bring it into your program because it'll keel over. Uh, don't do nested selects where you go to the program and back between the database and the program thousands of times because that'll be very slow. Same rules apply. Okay? Um, so that's, that's, that's very good if you've been programming you have that for a while. Um, then uh, the decision now is, do you convert your existing SAP system to S4HANA or do you go for a completely new implementation, a Greenfields implementation? Um, so we sort of debated it a bit and then we realized we have to do both in our situation because we've got existing clients that are going to convert to S4HANA and then we'll have new clients that will already have S4HANA and we'll have to implement on that. Um, so. The green field was really simple, okay? Fine. The, the conversion, uh, we found it quite a mission. Um, you know, you just said to the basis person, please convert it to s 4 hand And I thought that would be it. <laughs> and they'd come back a day later and say, yes, it's converted, thank you very much. Uh, but it wasn't that at all. Um, even though we've only got test data on the system, we haven't got a full-blown you know, production environment. We've just got test data. Um, you know, my impression of basis people is when you like when you install MS Word, you go to the website, you download it, you accept the conditions, you say next, 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 and it's done. <laughs> this took literally weeks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, basis person. <laughs> That's all I know about what you do. Okay? <laughs> but uh, this took weeks, um, and it, uh, the tool, the conversion tool, the sum tool, the software upgrade manager that was converting, this stopped uh, often. Um, and we needed SAP FI skills and ABAP skills to, to solve the issues. Um, you know, some of the issues were related to our product, not uh, but needed additional classes and things for, and we needed to upgrade the SAP certification tool we're using. Um, but then there were other things that uh, we kind of got stuck into, something in SAP called customer vendor integration, which is where we need to align your customer and vendor config and data with the business part of the data, something new to me. Um, and, and, and that really took a good few full-time days of someone's time to get that right. And we finally found <laughs> something on the internet to download and follow it step by step. Um, and there were lots of OSS notes that had to be applied. Um, you know, the, tool, the, the conversion tool complained about sites. Uh, now, these are organizational objects in retail. And we, the, the, the system we're converting was not a SAP retail system. It was a normal SAP system. We got plants in that system. And so we had to apply all sorts of OSS notes. And it did take us quite a while. And so the conversion was a mission that we got there. Um, now, the big change that we had to make um, to our system, we were speaking earlier about a lot of the old tables have disappeared and they've become views. And one of those is BSIC. So we had an append structure on BSIC. Um, now that's allowed. You probably, if, if you look at the tables, you might see many append structures for industry solutions and add-on solutions like ours. Um, and that's, and that's great and it was certified by SAP and we used it happily. Um, now, because the tables BSIC is disappearing, our append structure disappeared as well. Um, and we had to store that data somewhere else. Um, and we considered, you know, 
I pay needed to be safe, uh, but we, we were a bit scared of BC. It's quite a big table, I and mean, we think it might go anyway. Um, so we just stayed away from all the SAP standard tables, even if it is allowed in the paid structure, and, and, and stored in our own namespace tables. Um, but that means quite a few program changes, because we were no longer able to select the data from BSIC, our own data we just selected from a different table. So that was really our biggest change. Okay, so now um, we've got right, all our customers are using uh, SAP ECC and some are using the HANA database and many are talking about going for S4 HANA. So we could possibly have two versions of the product. Um, at the moment we've limited it to one. So we've got one version which is for both situations. Um, that's good for us because we can reuse it. Um, we foresee that as S4HANA changes, we might have to have some selection routines and things that work slightly differently um, between S4HANA and the one set version. But we're going to try and keep it as one because then that means we've got less coding to do. It's a simpler, simpler job for us. All right, and then. The next thing that comes to mind is let's use Fiori, um, which is associated with S4HANA. Uh, and as, as we know, Fiori is the kind of web interface instead of using the, the traditional SAP GUI. The users can now log on and process their transactions with the web interface, and cell phones and tablets, etc. Okay. Um, so, one, one interesting thing that we discovered is that the S4HANA. Uh, conversion was taking much longer than we thought and some people wanted to get stuck into Fiori. Um, you don't have to have a HANA database or S4 HANA to get Fiori working. Okay? You just need NetWeaver 7.3 or 7.4 we find is a bit better um, or higher and you can start with your Fiori. So it means that you can do the projects in parallel. You don't have to wait until the S4 HANA is done before you start working on Fiori. It works. It's just slow because it hasn't got as fast a database as HANA, but it does work. Um, so, so, so our approach was we have decided not to convert the whole product as a start, every single transaction to Fiori, um, you know, the configuration transactions and master data, and a lot of them possibly uh, aren't required at the moment for Fiori. We wanted to do the real sort of management reports and we've got some approval process. Um, put that onto Fiori first. Um, and another thing uh, you might remember from decades ago is the Internet Transaction Server. That actually allows you to put transactions on the web, okay? Um, it doesn't look as nice as Fiori um, and it's not done with uh, proper technology <coughs> like Fiori is. But uh, it's very cheap to do. You don't have to do any programming, okay? You just set up the Internet Transaction Server and your transactions are available on the web. And they look like the SAP transactions do on your GUI. Um, so that, that's a kind of uh, cheap shortcut <laughs> where you can put your transactions on the web straight away. Um, and then really what we've done is we've wrapped key parts of our code in, in, in RFCs. Um, we create them as a service, and now those can be called by Fiori. Um, and we're all at that programs, um, so we're gradually up, uh, upskilling ourselves. And some people have uh, you know, really got into the UI5, uh, but, but most of us need to learn a bit more. So we're gradually getting into the, uh, the mode of being able to use Fiori. And uh, other programmers actually want to be Fiori skilled because they're going to get paid tons in the future, presumably, because it's going to be a very uh, short supply of skill. You know? uh, and very handy, the Fiori developments are also include as transports, and we can put them in our tool. Uh, so you can use the transport management system as the normal SAP one for managing uh, whatever you build in Fiori. Okay, and just to finish off, I mean, that's, that's our development map. So the top line, we, we 
every quarter or so we try to release a support pack um, with functional improvements and, dare I say it, uh, bug fixes. Um, we've already certified the product on the HANA database and got customers using that, so we did that last year. Uh, and then this year we started with S4 HANA. Um, and at the end of June, a um, couple of weeks after we return from Sapita, we sit with the SAP International Certification Center in Germany and we get it certified for S4 HANA. Um, and then really we want to release um, the main uh, manager roles, the reporting and approval roles, uh, on Fiori uh, this year sometime. Uh, we want to uh, release some of the performance uh, reports that we've got, matching rates, etc., age analyses um, onto Fiori. I think that'll be quite useful. Um, and then a big one for us um, is with this S4 HANA and Fiori, we can now put our product on the cloud. Um, and so it means that we don't have to every time go and install our product on the supplier, on our customer SAP system, and be involved and get access to their SAP system, and sit at their site, and go through the whole transport thing. Um, also, we can offer the solution to non-SAP customers. So it will be SAP in the background, but they can log in through the web um, and, and do their supplier reconciliation, so that opens up the market. <coughs> Thanks very much.